Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at another one of the services built into Mac OS Server, and that's the DHCP service. Now, I've been a little uh, out of the recording angle here for the last couple weeks. That's just because I was on vacation and I had to uh, redesign uh, my desk and some of the things that I'm doing to record uh, to make it a little easier on me. And so maybe one of these days I'll show you what that desk setup looks like. So I just want to let you know I didn't disappear or anything like that, but it was just a couple of circumstances that compacted together that uh, just put the delay in there. But I'm I'm back and ready to, to deliver a bunch of content. So just want to let you know that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the DHCP service. Now DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And what DHCP does is it's what does the addressing on your network. So for instance, whenever a device enters your network and logs onto your network, either through Ethernet or Wi-Fi, it's given an address. And that address is its identifier for what that device is. And then that address allows it to have access to your network, to have access to the internet, uh, and all those sorts of things inside your network. And so DHCP is usually built into uh, every router that you get. And so generally speaking, routers will handle that addressing. And that just happens seamlessly behind the scenes as your devices get addressed and all those sorts of things. And if you remember in an earlier screencast, I talked about how to set up DHCP reservations so that your devices would have a permanent IP address. So that way, whenever you saw a device, let's say with 10.0.1.2, you would know that that was your server uh, and then so on for the different devices that you have set up. So it's just a, a way to guarantee a particular IP address. And sometimes when you're managing networks, it's a good way to do it as well. And I'm going to show you how you can do that inside the server's version of DHCP as well. Now, one of the things to consider in doing this, if you're a home user, uh, you may just want to stick with the DHCP that is built into your router. And that's because your router is usually always on. It's not dependent on your machine shutting off or not. If your router ever gets shut off, then pretty much your entire network is down anyway. And so it's a lot easier to keep the service associated with the router so that you don't have to worry about downtime. Because if you have it on your server instead of on the router, if your server goes down or something happens where your server is out of Mission, then all of your local network addressing goes down as well. And then that does allows, doesn't allow your devices to get on your network to access all of the services and that sort of thing. So again, I'd recommend at that point just to use your router. But if you're in a business and you have a situation, let's say, where maybe you want to consolidate uh, a number of DHCPs, uh, maybe just because you have a number of networks that you're uh, administrating and you want to basically have all of those things in one place, then the DHCP service is for you. So if you've got different subnets and that sort of thing, it's really a great way to uh, consolidate them and have them set up there. Again, you still have to make sure that your server is running 24-7 uh, or is at least running when people are accessing your network so that you don't have those issues with the, with the addressing. So anyways, that gives you an idea how that works. Now, what I'd like to do is just show you how this would work with the Apple router, because on an Apple router, you have a couple of things that you need to do if you're going to turn off the DHCP service so that you can use it on the server. And if you're using a third-party router, you'll probably use a configuration similar to this, or you may actually just have a switch that turns DHCP off and makes it much simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over to uh, a previous screencast where I talked about how this works. We're going to take a look at that and show you how to get your router set up so that the server can handle DHCP instead of the router. Uh, so here we are inside our airport utility, right? We're on the network tab here. And I've got it in router mode. I've got it in DHCP and NAT, right? That's our network address uh, translation, right? That's our opening our, That's what we use to open our ports and everything. And you can see here we have our reservations that we set up for certain things over here on the router. And we have our port settings over here. And these are the ports that we may open for different services and such. Uh, the things that the server uh, does for us and then just writes over to the, to the airport uh, extreme base station. Now, the problem is, is if I look at the router mode, I don't have a mode that leaves uh, the uh, NAT open and turns DHCP off. I've only got the option of turning off, um, you know, I'm putting it in bridge mode, which means that, you know, I'm not doing any ports and I'm not doing any address translation. So that's not going to work for me. I could do DHCP only, but again, I'm trying to turn DHCP off so that I can use it within the server interface. So you notice that I don't have this option to just run it with DHCP off or have it just kind of tell 
um, tell it that I want the server to manage it. So I've got to do a little bit of work here uh, to get this to happen if I'm using an Airport Extreme base station. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is just show you how this works. And so we're going to come down here to Network Options. And in here, this gives me my DHCP range. And you'll see I've got it right now from uh, you know 10.0, 0.1, up to 200. Well, in this case, what I would want to do is I'm just going to limit it to two addresses. And so I can't use point one because that's the router's address itself. Um, but I would go from point two, and then I would just change this number here to three. So that, that way I'm only assigning two addresses, and that's all that my router is handling. All right, That, that will allow me to open up that range for the server. Now, uh, make sure that you keep this uh, enable NAT port mapping protocol. Make sure you keep that there. And then I would put save there and then save it for these two addresses. I'm just going to say cancel because I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, now, once I'm done with that, then I want to go in and go ahead and make a reservation for my server like I did before. And that would be, let's say, the first address. So let's say I make it 10.0.1.2 for the server so that it has its own address. And then I would come in and hit the plus here and just add a second address for uh, just a bogus device. So I could just make this up, you know, just filler or whatever. Uh, put in a bogus MAC address and make sure this says, you know, 10.0.1.3, right? Or Because the other one would have been 2. And then that way what I've done is I've taken up the two addresses that my router is going to assign. So that it doesn't assign any more addresses to any device on my network so that the server can control all of that. I'm just going to cancel that. And so once I had those two reservations there, then I would be in good shape and I wouldn't have to worry about it. And it would set up, uh, it would allow me now to use the server for it. So we just got to put in that, uh, that bogus address there. Okay, so now that we've got the router all configured, let's go ahead and take a look at how to set up the DHCP service. So here we are in the networks box with uh, the various networks that we can set up. And so here we've got in a network that's just named 10.0.1 Ethernet. It starts at 10.0.1.2 uh, and goes to 253. So let's go ahead and just click on this. I can either double click on it or click the edit pencil there and it takes me into this network. Now I can name it whatever I want. So if I wanted to name it by the building, let's say that the network is in or say home or whatever I want to call it, I can call it whatever I want. Uh, you'll see here I can determine the lease duration and that's how long uh, a particular device holds on to an address. And so again, I'll show you a little bit later here how to do static IP addresses, but if you're just given a lease, you can determine whether it's an hour, a day, seven days, 30 days, that's up to you. It just depends on how you want to figure that out. Uh, again, if you've got a lot of guests coming in, you probably want to uh, lower the duration so that that doesn't get held on to and those address addresses get released instead of having them taken up by devices that aren't there anymore. Uh, again, I can choose the network interface. I can do Ethernet, uh, iPhone, USB, or Wi-Fi. And so that iPhone USB is a new option uh, where you can have uh, the network interface there through a USB connection uh, to your machine. And so it just adds another option for you. Again, you probably use that in rare circumstances, but it is there. Now here's where we put in our starting IP address and our ending IP address. And if you remember from what we just did on the airport, uh, what we would do is change this here. Instead of it being 2 at the end, we would change that to 4 so that that way we would have the right range because we took uh, 2 and 3 uh, on our router. And so that's where we'd start it, and then you can end it wherever you want. And so we just leave it at 253. Now here's where you put in your subnet mask, and so depending on what that subnet mask is, you would put that in here. And again, you can have uh, you know multiple subnet masks handled by the DHCP here. Uh, you can see I've got my router's address that gets put in there uh, so that that's all set. And then I can edit the DNS settings if I want. And I can provide different DNS settings to my clients. And so here I've just got generic ones filled in. But I could put in the server's address in there as well as an external address uh, that I might want to have as well uh, to handle that D uh, DNS. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this because we're going to leave that alone. So that shows you how you can set that up. And if I just uh, cancel this, come in here, I can add as many as I want. If I just hit the plus here, I can add another one with a different, different range. And you can see it's picked up a different starting range here for the Ethernet that's connected to my machine. And it gives me the different options here to set up uh, a completely different network. So uh, again, it does give you some flexibility to be able to manage some of these things. Let me go ahead and cancel that. 
Now, once I have the service ready, I can come over here to clients, and this is where I would manage the clients like I did in the airport utility. And this is where we would give things like static IP addresses, or we would actually see clients who are connected would show up here so I could determine what address they have, uh, what type they are, uh, and what network they're on as well. And so again, it'll either uh, here be a, a dynamic address, right, like a leased one, or it'll be a static address. So let me show you how to add one of those. If I just come in here and hit the plus, uh, this is where I would add the name of a device that I wanted to add. So for instance, let's just say it's a MacBook Pro that I'm adding to my network here. Uh, you can see I can choose what network to add it to. So if I had multiple networks, they would be showing up here in this drop down, and I could add whatever I wanted to. And then I can give it whatever static IP address I want. And so let's just say on this one, I want to give it a six. And so there I've got that set. And then I would come here and, and put in the MAC address. And the MAC address is found inside of system preferences. Uh, when you go to the advanced area of your network, you can see on the device, the actual device's MAC address. And so each device has a unique one. So I'm just going to put a bunch of uh, letters in here for our purposes. And so there's a generic one, and we're going to go ahead and say create. Now once I do that, this is what it would look like. You can see my client is MacBook Pro. It's a static address. There's the address that I gave it, and there's the network it's on. So that every time this device comes into my network, it will have this particular static IP address. And you can see where this would come in really handy if you're managing a bunch of different networks or a ton of users. It gives you, in one glance, a really good look at who's connected and how they're connected, and it allows you to set up those reservations. Uh, again, if I want to add another one, I just hit a plus down here, and I'm back in the screen to add another one. Uh, I could also come in here and either double click on it or just hitting this edit the client at any time and do it this way. Uh, one of the things I do have too you can notice here it says create static address. If I had a client that came on the network that had a particular address and I wanted just them just to keep that address I would just click this create static address and it would automatically change it to a static address so I didn't have to go in and put all that information in there. And that is really nice because you don't have to look up the MAC address or anything like that because you've got it already there and just by hitting that then you've set a permanent address that they have every time. So once I'm done with that, I just come back here and throw the switch and turn on the service and I'd have DHCP working from my server on my network. So that gives you an idea of how the DHCP service works. Again, like I said, if you're using a home network or something like that, you want to um, probably just uh, use the router, but uh, if you are managing a complex network and want to give it a try, uh, you can run DHCP right through the server. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.